In this video, let's learn regarding the resting membrane potential and two very important concepts in the resting membrane potential. One is called as the Gibbs Dunan equilibrium, and the second one is the Nernst equation. So, it's a request to watch this video till the end so as to understand these important and complex concepts under resting membrane potential. Let's start this video with a brief introduction. So, the cell membrane is not just a boundary which is separating the intracellular fluid from the extracellular fluid. A potential difference exists across the cell membrane. So, what is the meaning of this potential difference? That means there is a difference in the electrical charge which exists between outside and inside of the membrane. So, the inside of the membrane compared to the outside of the membrane is negative. This difference which is existing between outside and inside of the membrane with respect to the potential difference, this is what is called as the membrane potential. So, membrane potential, remember that, exists in both excitable cells as well as in non-excitable cells. So, the excitable cells, to be more specific, the cell membrane of the excitable cells, when they are not stimulated, they are said to be in a state of rest, fine? So, the membrane potential, what was the membrane potential? The difference in the electrical potential, which is between outside and inside of the cell membrane. During this state, that means when the cell membrane is at rest, that is what is called as the resting membrane potential. So, this state of the membrane, which is called as the resting membrane potential, remember that is also called as a polarized state, okay. So, whenever I stimulate this cell membrane, what is going to happen? The inside of the cell membrane, which was negative at rest, it is going to become positive. So, what has happened now? There is a change which has occurred in the resting membrane potential. So, what we can say is that the polarized state of the cell membrane has become a depolarized state, fine. So, how are we going to record this resting membrane potential? We record this resting membrane potential using the two electrodes. So, what are these two electrodes? Here we can see that this is the cell membrane, isn't it? This is the cell membrane. Just a second, I'll just change the color so that it will appear better. Okay, so this is the cell membrane. This is one electrode. So, this electrode is the one which is placed outside, okay, and there is on the cell membrane it is placed. So, this is the fluid outside and this one is the fluid which is inside. And here we can see this is one more electrode which is piercing through the cell membrane and here we can see that the tip of this electrode has come inside the cell. So, it is lying inside the cell in the cytoplasm or it, or it is bathed in the intracellular fluid. So, when these two electrodes are connected to voltmeter, I can record the resting membrane potential because what these two electrodes are going to record is the potential difference between outside the cell and the inside the cell. And when I record this, I am going to get a negative deflection in the voltmeter suggesting that resting membrane potential is always negative. So, what are the important factors which contribute to the generation of the resting membrane potential? The first one is the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Second is selective permeability of the cell membrane. Third is a very important concept which is called as the gibbs dunan equilibrium. Next we are going to learn regarding the Nernst equation and at last there is one more equation which is called as Goldman-Hodgkin equation. So first let's understand regarding this sodium potassium pump. We all know that this sodium potassium pump is an electrogenic pump. What does it do? It is going to pump three sodium outside and in exchange of that it is going to pump into potassium inside. So, the number of positive ions which is pumped outside is more in comparison with the number of positive ions which are entering inside the cell. So, when more number of positive ions from inside the cell go outside in comparison to the number of positive ions which are entering inside, what do you think is going to happen to the inside of the cell membrane? Of course, the inside of the cell membrane is going to become negative. But remember that sodium potassium ATPase is not very important in the generation of the resting membrane potential. But what does the sodium potassium ATPase is going to do? It is going to help in maintaining the already generated resting membrane potential. So that's the role of sodium potassium ATPase pump. Next, let's understand the selective permeability of the membrane. Again, this part what you are seeing here, okay, this is our cell membrane and the cell membrane has got ion channels. These ion channels are called as the leaky ion channels. There are leaky sodium channels and there are also leaky potassium channels. Both are there. Sodium is also there and potassium is also there. But remember that the concentration of potassium inside the cell is more and the concentration of the sodium outside the cell is more. So, that means there is a, a, there exists a concentration gradient for the potassium. 
So that means potassium now because of this existing concentration gradient because concentration of potassium is more inside it has the tendency always to move from inside to outside and because the concentration of sodium on the outside is more so what will the sodium want to do the sodium will always want to move from outside the cell to the inside of the cell. But remember that the cell membrane is more permeable to potassium than sodium. Why is this occurring? The concentration of potassium inside is more. So the potassium has to move outside. How much potassium is moving outside? The same amount of sodium has to move inside. Now why does this occur is that when the potassium or the sodium, they are in a hydrated state, the size of the potassium is less compared to the size of the sodium. So when the sodium is in a hydrated state, the size of the sodium increases and the amount of sodium which has to come from outside the cell to the inside the cell is less compared to the amount of potassium which is going to move from inside the cell to the outside the cell. That is why we say that potassium is 100 times more permeable than sodium. So when more amount of positive ions from inside move outside compared to the amount of positive ions which are coming from outside to inside, now what is going to happen? to the inside of the cell membrane again here the inside of the cell membrane is going to become negative so we have studied two things one is the role of sodium potassium ATPase it is not very important in generating the resting membrane potential but it does help in maintaining the already generated resting membrane potential the second is selective permeability of the membrane we have understood that the cell membrane is more permeable to potassium in comparison with the sodium potassium being higher concentration inside will always tend to go outside because of the concentration gradient and sodium which is higher on the outside will tend to enter inside. But why is it that the cell membrane is more permeable to potassium because hydrated potassium size is smaller compared to the hydrated sodium size. So that's why more amount of potassium. So there are more leakage of the potassium when the cell membrane is at rest compared to the more inward entry of the sodium from outside to inside. This also contributes in the generation of the resting membrane potential. Next, let's understand a very important concept which is called as the gibbs donan equilibrium which can be understood by this very simple example. Let's say there are two solutions. One is solution A and the solution B. Each of this solution is having potassium and the chloride. Here also it is having potassium and the chloride. So the amount of potassium and chloride in solution A is 10 ions each and even on the side B we have 10 ions. So what does the gibbs donan equilibrium say is that each solution should be electrically neutral and remember that these solutions are separated by a semi-permeable membrane, okay. So when there are two solutions separated by a semi-permeable membrane, according to gibbs donan equilibrium, each solution should be electrically neutral. So what does that mean? That means that the amount of positive ions on the side A should be equal to the amount of negative ions on the side A. That means amount of potassium should be equal to the amount of chloride. Here it is equal. On the side B also, the amount of sodium uh, sorry, the potassium, the positive ions on the side B should be same as the amount of negative ions on the side B. This is the first thing what it says. Potassium on A should be equal to the chloride on A and potassium on the side B also should be equal to chloride on the side B. Second very important thing what gibbs donan equilibrium says is that the product of diffusible ions, very important point here is that he is only telling that the product of the diffusible ions should be equal on the both sides. So what does that mean is that remember here is the remember here one very important point that is potassium and chloride both can diffuse across the semi permeable membrane. So the product of these diffusible ions on both the sides should be equal. That means potassium A multiplied by chloride A should be equal to potassium B multiplied by chloride B. This is what is the meaning of that. Remember that this product what I am telling it is not applicable to non-diffusable ions. So it is equal right now. So this can be also written in this manner. So now let's say what I have done is on the side A instead of chloride I have replaced the chloride with protein. Protein ions. Proteins are also ions and they also carry negatively negative charge. So what did the gibbs donan equilibrium say first? gibbs donan equilibrium said that the solution each solution which is separated by means of a semi permeable membrane okay what should happen it should have electrical neutrality so now is it electrically neutral yes there are 10 potassium ions on side a and then there are 10 protein ions on the side a potassium is positive protein is negative it is electrically neutral b of course 10 potassium and 10 chloride this is also electrically neutral yes the first criteria is done that is that means the net charge on side A is also 0 and the net charge on side B is also 0. 
but is the product of diffusible ions on the side A equal to the product of diffusible ions on the side B? No. Why? Because protein is a non-diffusible anion. Protein is a non-diffusible anion. That means there is a less quantity of negative ions on the side A. Less quantity of negative ions on the side A. So, electrical neutrality is right now not maintained between side A and side B. So, if electrical neutrality is not maintained, now what has to happen? The negative ions from the side B, they have to move towards the side A. So, which is the negative ion which is present on the side B? It is the chloride ion. So, now the chloride keeps on moving from the side B to the side A. So, this movement occurs till what point of time? This movement occurs till the point of time the amount of chloride on side A and side B is equal. That should be how much? 5 chloride ions here out of 10 from B, 5 will be moving. How many will be remaining on the side B? On the side B also, 5 will be remaining. So, now let's see what has happened to the net charge. Okay, that is what the first thing we said regarding the Gibbs Dunn and equilibrium is that the net charge also should be zero. That is the amount of positive ions in each solution should be equal to the amount of negative ions. But what has now happened on the side A? On the side A, how many positive ions are there? There are 10 positive ions. How many negative ions are there totally? There are 15 negative ions. So what has happened to the net charge? The net charge has become minus 5 now on the side A. What has happened to the side B? The number of positive ions that is potassium is 10 whereas the number of negative ions is only 5 that is chloride. So what has happened to the net charge on the side B? The net charge has become plus 5. You are getting this point? So now what is going to happen is because here the net charge is plus 5 the potassium ions which are carrying positive charge now they move from the side B to the side A. Again, each solution is not electrically neutral here. Each solution is not electrically neutral. So, what has happened here is that the amount of negative ions on the side A is more compared to the amount of negative ions here. So, here there is more electrical negativity compared to this side. So, in order to compensate for this, what is going to happen is a positive ion that is potassium is now going to move from side B to side A. This movement also keeps on occurring till what point of time? Till 5 ions from the B side that is potassium ions from the B side they move to the A side. Now what has happened is there are 15 positive ions on side A and also 15 negative ions on the side B. So what has happened to the net charge? The net charge has become zero. That means now each solution is again electrically neutral. So what has happened to the side B again? Side B also here it is 5 positive ions and here it is 5 negative ions. Even on side B the net charge has become zero. But is the product of diffusible ions on the side A and side B is equal? No. So what has happened here is that the positive ions on this side has increased in number. Now we are having 15 positive ions. When I'm speaking about the positive ions, I'm speaking now about the diffusible positive ions and there are only 5 diffusible negative ions. Got the point? So the addition of non-diffusible anions on the side A has caused also an increase in the concentration of cations in the side A but these are diffusible cations. Because these are diffusible cations what has happened now is that the concentration of positive ions on the side A has increased. Now because of this concentration gradient what is going to happen the positive ions from this side they are going to diffuse to the side B. They are going to diffuse to the side B. Because of the non-diffusible anions, there is an increase in the positive ions in the A compartment. Now, that is going to cause movement of the positive ions from the side A to the side B. So, now this movement from the side A to the side B keeps on occurring. Because, why is this movement occurring? Because of the concentration gradient. A time is going to come when this concentration gradient is equated to the electrical gradient and at that point of time, the movement of the positive ions from the side A to the side B is, side B is going to stop. Fine. That is what is Nernst equation is. So, the potential at which the equilibrium can be reached between these two gradients, the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient. See, the potassium keeps on moving from the side A to the side B, but this will be negated by electrical gradient which will be there. So, this concentration gradient and electrical gradient, they are going to reach an equilibrium. The potential at which they reach the equilibrium is what is called as equilibrium potential. Understand this, okay? The magnitude of this equilibrium which is called as 
equilibrium potential how much is this equilibrium potential that is what is determined by this very important equation which is called as the Nernst equation so what does Nernst equation help us to understand is that it helps us in determining the equilibrium potential of each ion what is the meaning of equilibrium potential I am again repeating it is the potential of the membrane at which the concentration gradient is equivalent to the electrical gradient thus there is no net movement of the ions so at what membrane potential is this equilibrium reach is what is given by the Nernst equation so at what potential of the membrane the influx and the efflux of an ion is equal because once the equilibrium is reached there will be no net movement of the ions from side A to side B. So the equilibrium potential means actually the potential inside the cell membrane for example for potassium the equilibrium potential is minus 90 now why it is minus 90 millivolts because potassium keeps on moving from inside to the outside of the cell. There is a huge concentration gradient between inside and outside of the cell so this will be at one point of time opposed equally by the electrical gradient so the potential of the membrane at which this opposition is going to occur is what is called as the equilibrium potential because we are recording the equilibrium potential from inside of the cell membrane lot of potassium has already moved from inside to outside that's why the inside of the cell membrane because of the potassium will be negative so potassium's equilibrium uh, potential is minus 90 millivolts similarly the sodium's equilibrium potential will be plus 30 60 millivolts okay plus 60 millivolts not 30 60 plus 60 millivolts why is that occurring because the concentration of sodium is high on the outside so the sodium from the outside is going to come inside so when i start to measure the equilibrium potential inside the cell membrane i find that sodium's equilibrium potential is plus 60 millivolts and how do we uh, calculate this equilibrium potential is using this formula which is called as EMF. EMF is nothing but the electromotive force or it can be simply written as the equilibrium potential that is equal to plus or minus 61 log concentration inside divided by concentration outside. Now what is the role of this Goldman Hodgkin Katz equation? What did the Nernst equation give me? Nernst equation gave me to identify or to know the equilibrium potential of one single ion but what does goldman hodgkin katz equation tells me is the role of different ions in the generation of the resting membrane potential there are so many ions which might be helping in the generation of the resting membrane potential like potassium like sodium like chloride but among all these which is that one which is contributing the maximum in the generation of the resting membrane potential that is what is given by the goldman hodgkin katz equation so what does it depend upon as to which ion is contributing maximum in the generation of the resting membrane potential now this is going to depend upon the degree of the permeability of the ions and we all know that potassium is the most permeable ion that's why in the generation of the resting membrane potential remember that potassium is the ion which is responsible to our maximum extent or to our maximum limit so most important ion if somebody asks you even as a multiple choice question which is the most important ion which is responsible for the generation of the resting membrane potential then it has to be potassium so now we understood as to why the inside of the cell is more negative at rest because more amount of non-diffusable negative ions are present inside the cell in the form of proteins so the positive ions this is going to increase the concentration of potassium inside the cell and the positive ions from inside they try to diffuse outside so positive ions are diffusing outside but the positive ions from outside are not entering inside because it is again dependent upon the permeability of the cell membrane also there is a role of sodium potassium ATPase, which is pumping three sodium ions outside and two potassium ions inside so sodium potassium ATPase pump is basically helping in maintaining the already generated resting membrane potential i hope this is helpful for you in understanding the resting membrane potential thanks a lot for listening to this